the cheater I am. <laughs> um, my name is Mark Trushen. Um I'm the maths tutor for O-Level forward slash GCSE. Um, I'm based in the UK. I've been in education as a teacher for over 30 years. Um, the latter part of my career in schools was as a head teacher for 10 years. Um, and I've taught O level and GCSE maths for all of my career. Um, I'm still teaching, as you can as you can see, and I'm also involved in teaching um, graduates who are training to be maths teachers. So I've got uh, quite a, a, a long pedigree in, in teaching student mathematics, but also um, teachers to be teachers of mathematics. Um, so that's a little bit of background for me. What we're going to do over the next 20 minutes or so is just take you through a demonstration lesson. It is 20 minutes and normally a lesson would be an hour or 90 minutes. Um, so some of the activities we will pause and I will explain what, what we would do. Um, but I would um, uh, not ask you to do those activities obviously today with this demonstration lesson. Um, so what I was saying just now before we start the lesson properly is if you could um, take your hands down on your emojis um, and any um, ticks or exclamation marks that you might have. Um, so I've got a blank screen. Um, so I've still got um, Ash, Ashar uh, with the hands up. Thank you very much. Uh, Mariam, if you've got a tick on your screen, if you wouldn't mind unticking that, please. Um, uh, so we're nearly there. Doesn't matter too much, but what I was going to ask you to do was just um, now try and locate the tick on your screen, and if everybody can tick, if you can hear me, um, that would be really helpful. And then I can see if there's anybody that can't hear what I'm saying. Okay, so I've got three ticks. Any more ticks? Okay. Um, I'm good. Oh, well, brilliant. Thank you. Uh, I a fan, and um, we've got one or two more people joining us as well. Okay, that's great. So um, I'm going to just talk you through now um, how this session would work, um, take you through some examples of the lessons. Um, at the moment, you're all muted, so at different points, I will unmute you, um, and you'll be able to answer some questions, and we can answer those directly. And we also have um, Shoab with us, and he can um, answer questions at the end of the session as well. Um, so as you can see on the screen, um, hopefully you can see that I'm just uh, moving my prompt, my tick, um, sorry, arrow up and down across the objectives on the left-hand side. Um, so this is a typical session. Um, it's around solving equations. Obviously, because today is a demonstration lesson, um, there's quite a few assumptions around um, previous knowledge. And obviously, with maths, it's a, it's a building block process. So um, it may be that um, we would have done some, some preparation before we start this session. But assuming everything's been covered and we're in this position, these are the objectives for today's session. So the objective one is to understand various methods to solve equations with the unknown on one side of the equation. So I will explain that a little bit more in a moment. Um, the second objective is to apply the best appropriate method to solve equations with the unknown on both sides. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through one method today. Um, normally, we would go through three or four methods um, so pupils can understand um, various approaches and, you know, kind of find the approach that's suitable for them. But because time's short today, we'll, we'll just cover the one, the one session. And then finally, we're going to apply, apply the um, algebra to a work-based problem and find the best solution for that. So often I would start with a, a work-based program uh, problem, which I will show you a little bit later on. Um, and we'll use that to apply things. We'll also apply our learning from these objectives to um, GCSE and O-level based questions. And um, we can talk a little bit about that later on, about how we make sure that um, pupils are prepared for the examination that they're going to sit. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to share my um, screen that I can use with this particular software. Um, so what you should see coming up on your screen now is um, my iPad. And what I'm going to take you through, and then I'll, I'll unshare again in a moment, um, is the one example of one method um, to then apply to some questions. So I'm going to, I'm going to use two, two slides. I'm going to use this slide, and I'm going to use the next slide here to apply it to an equation with the unknown on one side, which is um, what I was saying about uh, the first objective. So what we have here um, is basically, if I look at this question that I've just put a red asterisk to, um, 
Uh, I'm just going to decline that request to, to use that content for the minute. Um, so what I'm going to do is just show one method to um, solve this equation, and I'll give it a couple of examples. So um, what we're going to use is this thing called float and ping. And like I say, we would use several different methods, and we would apply several different methods. So there are things like a function machine or a flow, uh, flow diagram method. We've also got methods where we can um, balance on both sides. But this is uh, a way that I'm going to use two methods to build up so we can um, solve more difficult equations. So float and ping is where we say, right, okay, we want to find x this is this is what we're trying to solve um, so what we need to do is we need to remove the two here including the plus sign over to the other side of the equal sign and we're going to apply this uh, phraseology called float and ping so we're going to float uh, by putting a kind of um, air balloon or a um, you know kind of inflated ball around the plus and the two and we float it over to the other side of the equal sign and the ping is when we go over the equal sign here, um, the sign changes. So instead of being positive 2, it pings to negative 2. So every time we go over the equal sign, we float and then we ping, and the ping is the um, indication that you should change the, uh, change the sign. All right? So we floated it to the other side. So now what we've got is that this balloon has disappeared over to the other side of the equal sign. And what we've got left is x. We've got equals because that plus 2 has floated to the other side. And then we've got this bit here, which is 5 take away 2. All right, 5 take away 2 is 3. So we've solved that particular equation. Now, obviously, it's not a very difficult equation. And we're building up a, a you know, set of techniques that are going to help us with more difficult um, solutions later down the line. Um, I won't go through all of these, but you get the idea. If I just change to blue, if I look at this one up here, um, I'm trying to find x. Um, so what am I going to do? I'm going to highlight and identify the bit that I need to float and ping to the other side. As I float it, it pings over the equal sign and it changes to positive 4. Okay, so I now simplify this. I've got x, that balloon has moved to the other side, and I've got 7 at 4, which is 11, and I've got my solution. So you can see the, the way that I'm building this up. I'll do one more because there's um, a change to this example here where I've got 3x equals 7 take away 2x. And in this case, it wouldn't help me to move this 7. If I move the 7 over to that side, I'm still going to have an unknown on, on, one, on both sides. And I don't want that. I want to get the unknown onto one side. So I'm not going to move that 7 because it's not very helpful to me. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this minus 2x. And I'm going to float that over to the other side. Okay, remember what I said, we change the sign as we do that, and then we uh, tidy up. So I've got 3x equals, sorry, I've got 3x plus the 2x, and then equals 7. Okay, so if I simplify that, I end up with 5x equals 7. Now, I haven't solved that because I'm now going to move on to the second um, of the strategies we're going to use, which is escalate up or down. So if you look at this uh, this one over here where I've got the asterisk, you can see that I've got 5x equals 7. Now, I could solve that in my head. I know that it's going to be x equals 7 divided by 5. But I want to show a second method. So I can then use these to build up and, and answer more difficult problems. So if you bear with me uh, as I rub that out and I change color of the pen, um, to let's say green. I'm now going to look at this escalating up or down. So I've got a slightly different um, example here. And I haven't got anything added or taken away like the examples I've just been through. What I've now got is I've got 4x. So I've actually got, if I work multiply that out, I've got 4 times x equals 8. Okay. Um, different people use different um, signs for that you may be more familiar with it writing out in full that way um doesn't matter too much we're building the techniques up but when we've got this four multiplied what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this escalator method all right because it's next to the x i'm going to escalate it down and i end up with this more simplified version of x equals 8 over 4 which we know is 2. okay so we're escalating the number down in this example here we've got to escalate the number up because it's going the other way. So I'm going to end up with times 4. So I end up with x equals 12. 
So I've used two different methods. Um, I've used float and ping um, to move something that's added or taken away. And I've moved it across to the other side so we can solve the equation. And I've used escalate if we've got something that's multiplied or divided um, against the x. And then we've either multiplied it up or we've divided it down using the escalator method to solve that equation. What we then move on to, and I'll do these, these two very quickly for you, and then I'll unshare and we can come back and, and we can open up for, for some questions. Um, so in this example here, we've now got both methods that we need to apply. So let's go to black. Um, so if I look at A, okay, I've got both methods that I've just been through. So the first thing to apply is a float and ping. We float that over. If you remember, we said we put it into a balloon. We float it over and we change the sign. Okay, so if we simplify that, we now get two X bats moved and we get this nine take away three, which is six. Now I can do the answer in my head, but I'm going to apply this escalator method. It's next to the X, I'm going to escalate it down which gives me that, which is x is 6 and 2, and then I've got x equals 3. So I can use both numbers. Mark, can you just interview there for a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to un I'll un unshare and we can um, ask them. I just want to make sure that everybody can see your screen, because I've got a comment from one of the participants that they can't see the screen. They can only see you. So I just wanted to make sure everybody, everybody can see. Um, the they won't be able to see my screen now because I've unshared it. Okay. Now, if you go back and share it, and then we ask everybody that if they can see it. Okay. When I share my screen, um, Shoab, I can't then see the um, ticks and crosses on the um, people that are um, watching. Don't worry. I, so I, if, you have, yeah, if you have a look at that, and then I'll unshare again in a moment. So I'm just yeah, going yeah, so to share that screen again. Okay. Fantastic. So, so that should be shared. Can you see that? Yes, I can see that. Okay. Um, so if you want Fantastic. to... Okay, so if, if everybody can uh, take the tick mark, uh, so I can see that... Uh, Ask if I'm rubbing... I'm rubbing it out now. <laughs> that's right, yeah. Okay, Asha, can you please uh, say yes, if you can say, hear, see the screen? Uh, Irfan... Okay, that one is strange. Okay, so one of the participants actually can't can only see you. So okay, <laughs> so unfortunate for them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, everybody else can see it, can they? Yes, I believe so, yeah. Okay, let me just un unshare for a minute because there may be some questions relating to, to that and it may be the, the okay. technical issue with um, the person that can't see it. So um, I've unshared now, so you should be able to see the um, objectives again on the screen and, and see my video. Um, what I would share with you is what we would now do is move on to um, putting some questions on the board. You can see those questions there. There are a whole bunch of questions from A through to you. And I would let the people have a go at some of those questions. Not all of them, but we would go through a few, um, a few questions. Um, they would answer them independently on paper. And then we would come back and we would go through some answers and check how they're getting on. So it would be some self-marking and some self-check. Um, also, at this point, if somebody has not understood what I've been through, then I can do some separate um, teaching with them. Um, we can go into um, a separate room, or a virtual room, um, and we, I can go through that with them whilst the other pupils are practicing some of these questions. And obviously, as you can see, we start off with A. If you see my prompt, my, my arrow there. We start off with A, which is the one that I was going through on the whiteboard just now, which is quite simple, down to slightly more complicated questions down the bottom U. And we'll gradually build that up. So I would want to see that pupils were confident in, in um, applying their understanding to these questions before we then moved on. Um, and I'll take questions now, if that's okay, Shoab, and then we'll move on and I'll show you what the, the next slide might look like. Yes, you can. Yes, okay. definitely you can. So, so, so let, let, let's stop there. And can you unmute everybody from the central position, Shoab? Is that the best way to do this? 
Uh, I can do that, yes. Um, so I think everybody's unmuted at all. Um, what is unmuted? Well, there may be some questions. It may be depending on your internet connection. It may be to you or not. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Everybody is unmuted now, so whoever has the question can go ahead. Has anybody got any questions? <laughs> Okay, so what, uh, whoever has the question can raise the hand and, and ask the question. Let's yeah, do that's, that's the easiest way, yeah. Good, yeah, I think that's point. Yeah. Okay, so it doesn't appear to be any questions at the moment because nobody's raised their hand. So what we'll do is we'll go through to the next screen. You can see the next example questions I would go through. And then once I've been through that, we'll stop and we'll see if there's any questions at that point. Is that okay, Shoah? Yeah, sounds good, yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is you will see that these are all, the, the, the examples that are on the board, um, these are all with unknowns on one side. So we would apply the techniques that I've been through, which was float and ping, to answer the unknowns on one side. But what we want to move towards is unknowns on both sides. And you can see the difference here um, between the questions that I've now just put on your board. So we can see, if you look at my arrow, that we've got x on the left-hand side of equal sign, and we've got x on the right-hand side of equal sign. So we've got um, a different set of problems to, if I just go back to this more simple process, where you've got x on one side of equal sign, but no x on the other side of the equal sign. So we're using techniques to build up um, to more complex questions. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen again. Okay, and I'm just going to talk you through how I might um, approach uh, looking at unknowns on both sides. So hopefully I've got, can you see this on my screen? Um, and show up, you, you'll be able to see the hands up and hands down. I won't be able to see that for the moment. Um, so this was a screen I showed you before, but this next screen here is an example of um, unknowns on both sides. So as I said, if I just put a red thing here, I've got an X on this side and I've got an X on this side, and I don't want that, I want to solve it, so I want to find X equals something. Okay, so my idea is to use those two methods combined to work out what the answer would be. Okay, so I'm going to, first of all, float and ping any small numbers or the smallest number that I have over to the other side of the equal sign. If you remember what we did, we floated it in a balloon across, and we changed the sign, so float, ping changes the sign, and we've got the minus one on the other side. So if I now simplify that, that's gone. I've got 4x. My balloon has floated to the other side. I've got 2x. I haven't done anything with that. But I've now got this plus 7 take away 1, which I know is going to be plus 6. So I've now got to a question that's more like the, the questions we had before, except I've got this problem of 2x, which I want to float over to there. So I'm going to float that 2x over to there. Now, if I haven't got a sign in front of a number, um, then I know that it's positive. So I know even though that hasn't got a sign there, it is a positive 2x. So when I float that over to here, it's going to be minus 2x. Okay? So I've now got this bit to tidy up, which is 4x take away 2x, which gives me 2x. And this balloon has been floated across the other side, equals 6. Right, so I'm almost there. I can work out the final answer in my head, but I won't. I'll use that escalator method. I've got the 2. If you remember, we escalated it down, so we ended up with 6 over 2. Excuse my messy um, working out, and that leaves me with x equals 3 as a solution. Okay, um, and I've got my final answer. So I've applied the float and ping, and I've applied the um, escalator method to, to solve that. Let me just rub that, that little bit out there so you can see the next question a little bit more clearly. I'll go through one more example, and then we'll come back to uh, the main screens. Um, so here, same thing. What did I say? I said take the smallest number. The smallest number is minus 10. So I've got minus 10, and I'm going to float and ping that over to here. As it goes over the equal sign, I'm going to change the sign to positive 10. So I've now got 9x. That's been floated. Equals 7x. I've got plus 24 plus 10, so I've got plus 34. Okay, I now need to float and ping this 7x across. I know that it's positive, so I've got to change the sign. Okay, 
and I end up with minus 7x on that side. That disappears. I've got 9x take away 7x, which gives me 2x, and I've got equals 34. Okay. I've got one final thing to do. Let me just write that up here so I've got a bit more space. 2x equals 34. All right. I'm going to escalate that 2, which is multiplied by the x, and I'm going to multiply it, uh, divide it down on the escalator like that. So I get x equals 34 over 2, x equals 17. So we've applied now the two methods, float and ping, and escalator methods. And we've used them both to solve an unknown on both sides. So it's a little bit more complicated. Um, but simple to do if we just apply those techniques. So let me unshare. And you should now see me. And you can see these raft of questions here that are all very similar. Again, starting with question A, which is a fairly straightforward unknown on both sides and a positive number on both sides. And then we move down to more complicated things down the bottom here. If you look at um, this question O, you've got 15 minus x. So we've got a, a, you know, a negative x on one side, and we've got negative 3x on the other side. So the techniques that we need to use for O, exactly the same, but the starting point is going to be slightly different. So we would give pupils a chance to have a go through some of those questions, um, and then we would come back to the whiteboard and we would um, sample some of those questions and just check to see how they've got on. And again, once I'm secure, um, or I, I feel that pupils are secure, we'd move on. Um, and we would move on to um, the next bit, which is unknowns on both sides, but also with brackets. So you can see the progression. I'm not going to go through these examples, but we can see this progression where we've now got um, unknowns on both sides, but we've got to multiply out the brackets first. So again, as I said earlier on, what we need to do is make sure that people are, are solid in, in their understanding of what they need to do. Underneath, as you can see with my prompt here, um, ignore that, that bit of the balance of prompt for me, where it says apply. All right, we've got a question that is an application question, so we're actually going, right, okay, can we apply this, um, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's taken us through um, some basic examples. Um, again, um, show up if we just pause there to see if there are any questions. Um, so what I suggest people do is untick there, there you, there's quite a lot of ticks on the screen at the moment. If you untick and then if anybody's got a question, put your hand up and we will unmute you and then you can ask the question and we can reply to your question. Is that okay, Sean? Yes, definitely. Okay, so we've still got quite a few ticks on the screen. Those people who've got ticks, uh, would you mind unticking? Or if you, it might say, yeah, it might be a yes on your screen rather than a tick. It depends whether you're using a mobile or, or a computer. Um, so if you wouldn't mind unticking, it's, and if that's great. Uh, Mayan, you've still got a tick. Uh, Irfan, you've still got a tick. Um, Reman, you've still got a tick. Okay, maybe not hearing me. Um, if you have a question, put your hand up. If you don't have a question, then you won't put your hand up, and I will go on and explain what we would do next. Okay, so there are no questions. That's, that's great. I might be explaining it quite well. Who knows? Um, so what I've said there is we've been through some, some um, examples here. So what we would now need to do is look at a word problem. Now, you'll need to bear with me because I need to try and find a file. Um, should be straightforward, but I need to find word problems file. And hopefully that will upload without any problems. Let's just um, select that and say that's okay. And with luck, that will come up on your screen in a few seconds. You can see the little words going around. I'd have all these things up on the screen before, but there you go. There you go. We've, got, we've got a word problem. Uh, now, I would usually present this word problem at the start of the lesson. So I'd let pupils, whilst you know, some of you have been waiting um, you know, for other people to join the session, um, what I would do is I'd have this word problem here up on the screen for pupils to have a go at um, before we do the lesson. Um, but then at the end of the lesson, we'll come back to it and we'll say, okay, well, let's have a look at that again um, and see if we can apply the understanding and knowledge that we've learned in the lesson to something that's a little bit more complicated. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to now share my um, whiteboard again. Um, and you'll see the mess of the, um, 
the calculation side just did. Apologies for that. I'm trying to put too much on one whiteboard at a time, I think. Um, but if I go to the next screen, there's, there's some bracket examples which I would go through. I'm not going to do that now, but um, the more complicated ones, you can see how difficult we can build that up in one lesson. After an hour, we can, you know, really try and solve some really quite complicated um, equations with unknowns on both sides, but also multi brackets. But here's the word problem that I just um, pulled up on the screen for you. Um, so what we've got here is we've got some goats and some chickens in the farmyard. A worm counts 15 heads and 48 legs. How many chickens are there? Some pupils might be able to um, work that out without using algebra at the beginning of the session. But what we're going to do is we're just going to use some algebra to apply that. Um, so we've got goats, which I'm going to call G, and we've got chickens, which I'm going to call C. Okay, so those are my two um, unknowns. Um, So a worm counts 15 heads and 48 legs. Well, I know that a goat has one head, and I know that a chicken has one head. So one lot of goat plus one lot of chicken is going to equal the number of heads that we've got, which is 15. So that's my first equation that I'm going to, to create. Um, my second one is about the legs. Well, I know that I've got four legs on a goat, and I've got two legs on a chicken. So those two added together is going to equal to 48. Okay. So I've now got two equations that I can use to solve this. All right. It's not exactly the methods that we were using, but we've now got enough to try and think about right, what, what, what might we do. So um, let me just change colours here. So I'm going to take this, this one and I'm going to rearrange that. And again, this is another lesson that we do in terms of rearranging. But if I want to um, just find out what, um, what C, C is on its own, all right. What I can do is apply the same same methods. No, let's find let's find out what G is. So I want G equals something because I'm going to substitute that in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that bit next to G and float and ping it over to the other side, just in the same way as we did before. All right. So I've moved it in a float and ping, and I've changed the sign. I've moved it to the other side. I can't solve it because I don't know what C is. That's the number of chickens, and I don't know what the number of chickens are. But by turning G equals 15 minus C, I can now go to this expression and substitute in um, G. So, uh, so um, instead of putting G, so 4 times G, I'm going to put 4 times what G is equal to, which is 15 minus C. Okay? And that equal, uh, plus 2C equals 48. So it's the same expression, except I've substituted G for this uh, rearrangement. If I now multiply that out, I've got 4 times 15, okay, so 4 times 15 is 60, 4 times minus C, which is minus 4C, I've got a plus 2C, I've got a 48, all right? If I now sort that out, um, I've got 60, minus 4C plus 2C gives me five, minus 2C, I've got equals 48. Okay, and I'm starting to solve this. If I rapidly tie this up, because you'll probably uh, will have worked this out already, I'm going to float and ping that 2C over, so I get 60 um, equals 48 plus 2C. I'm going to float and ping that 48 over to there. It's going to become minus 48. That gives me 60 minus 48, which is 12. 12 equals 2C, and then I'm going to escalate that 2C down. I've done this really quickly. I'll do it slower with the children. All right, and I get C equals 6. So I've got 6 chickens, okay? So 6 chickens, there's the answer to the question. If I wanted to find out how many goats there were, well, I had goats here. Goats plus chicken equals 15, so goats must be equal to 9, because 9 plus 6 equals 15. All right, so that's uh, applying some of our knowledge to a word problem. Um, let me unshare and come back to our main screen. Okay, so um, the final thing for me to say, um, and we spent half an hour kind of looking through an example lesson, is that we would also look at some um, past paper questions for each session. And we would build the session up. Um, and finish with some um, GCSE or O-level based questions, um, and then we would move on to another session. Now, there's no prescribed scheme of work that I would work to. Um, the more logical thing for me to do from this example was to say, right, what's the build on from being able to solve equations on both sides? That might be solving quadratic equations, um, because we're in the mode of algebra and we're starting to do that. Or I could apply the techniques that I've just done in terms of float and ping and um, escalate method to um, 
uh, rearranging formulae. So rather than solving an equation, but rearranging formulae. So, you know, make F the subject of or something like that. So that would be a more logical um, lesson to follow on from this one. And we would build it on and build it on and try and use those building blocks so people are confident with those questions. Um, as we get closer to exam season, then we would start to build in um, a greater range of um, past paper questions. And we can source past paper questions from um, the different boards that pupils will be sitting their exam with. Um, often it's, the O level is uh, through Cambridge, and Cambridge will have a bunch of um, past papers, but we'll also have specimen papers for 2020 and specimen papers for 2021. So we can look at those. Um, we can also um, if you're doing GCSE, look at different examples, you know, if you're doing, you know, the Welsh example or something or whatever, whatever it is, um, we can look at past papers. So we can, you know, kind of apply, um, you know, the types of questions that they're going to ask. But most GCSE um, questions are going to be um, similar no matter which board you're with and the same with O-level. So as long as we've got a distinction between O-level type questions and GCSE type questions, then, you know, it should be fairly generic. Okay, Shoab, I'm, I'm pretty much done with the uh, sample lesson, so uh, shall I hand over to you to host for any questions or any um, concluding comments with regards to, um, you know, what, what people need to know? Fantastic. Thank you very much, Mark. Yeah, so if you've got any questions, uh, you can raise a hand. Okay, we have one question from Ashan Farooq. Uh, if we can unmute Ashan. How are you doing, Ashan? Yeah, I'm fine. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Where are you based? Uh, I'm basically in Lahore, Pakistan. Okay, okay. Thank you for that. I'm, I'm in Somerset in the UK, yeah. so this is the wonder yeah. of the yeah. internet, isn't it? So, so what, what was your question? So, sorry, I, sorry, I can't hear you. Can you repeat? I, yeah, just asking you what your question is. Yeah, basically the chicken example, I mean the chicken and goat example. Yes. So could we solve that question simultaneously? Yes, you could. Yeah, yeah, well spotted. Um, if I went back to the board, I'm not on the board at the moment, but you do have two, yeah, you, you have got two um, equations. So yes, you could then, rather than doing the substitution, um, you could do a simultaneous equations uh, solution. So yeah, have a go at it. If you can, if you write it down, have a go at it, you know, solving it simultaneously. But yeah, absolutely you can. So well, well right. yeah. Um, what I would do, because this is only a sample lesson, what we would do is, yeah, yeah. You know, as I say, we'd look at lots of different ways of solving different um, different um, exactly. questions. So in that in that example, there's you know there's a couple of ways of doing it, and I did one, and yeah. you can work out the other one. So yeah, yeah, good. Indeed, one. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Okay. And um, what what um, course are you studying? Uh, you mean which board? Cambridge um, Edexa. Uh, are you doing O level or are you doing GCSE or are you? Yeah, I'm in O level IGCSE. IGCSE, is that with GCSE, Cambridge? Yeah. Yeah, with Cambridge. yeah Cambridge. Okay. Yeah, and, in Cambridge. And when do you when do you sit the exam? Is it 2020 or 2021? Um, I guess the Cambridge exams will be in 2021, I guess. 2021. Okay. So you're, yeah. you're, you're, and currently, you're currently in year 10, are you? Or yes, I'm not sure. Uh, actually, I'm in 901. So basically, I will be I'll be giving two papers in 2020, I guess, and or something like this. You know, it's my first time okay. starting the O levels. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. 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 All right. Well, well, well done. You seem to have a very good understanding straight away. So that's something very positive. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, I was looking on to this lecture for, for very long, you know, I was following you. Excellent. Unfortunately, I was a bit, a bit late, but you know, it was enjoyable. Nice. Thank you. Good Thank talk. you. I appreciate the feedback. That's, uh, that's lovely. Okay. Um, I'm just going to gonna meet you again to see if there's anybody else. So thanks very much, Afshan, and um, mm. hopefully we'll, uh, we, you know, we'll see you again. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so Shoab, Ashan's asked a really good question there in terms of um, how you um, might answer that question and, uh, and, and very um, astutely worked out there's, a, there's another way of working it out, which, uh, which we could have done. Fantastic. So do we have any other questions? So if there are any other questions, you can put your hands up um, and then we can um, unmute you.
it doesn't doesn't look like there are any more questions at this point. Uh, okay, that's fine. But we, what we can do is, is we can unmute everybody and, and have a feedback about the voice quality and everything quickly so that we see if we can have yeah. the... Do you want me to do that? Yes, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll unmute everybody. So, so be aware, everyone, you are now um, unmuted. So whatever you're saying to your friend next door to you, I can hear. Um, um, yeah, so, so everybody's unmuted, so if you have questions that you want to post just through your microphone, then feel free. Yeah, I just want to say the class is really enjoyable, really understanding. I was looking for this class and really enjoyed it. That's great. Thank you very much. Who, who's speaking at the moment? I'm the house. Okay, thank you very much, Michal. That's a very kind comment. What, what, what um... What course are you on? Are you on a level or GCSE? I'm doing IGCSE. I'm going to year 10. Okay. All right. So similar to Asha when he was asking this now. So that's, that's great. Yes. Okay. Lovely. Well, hopefully we'll see you again, you know, when we start the, the sessions properly. That would, that would be great. Yeah. That would be great. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm just going to mute you now, Nihal. Uh, no, well, I'll leave you open to everybody's up. Nihal's got questions that they want to um, use their microphone with. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go back and mute everybody then so we can just finish off the session. If you do have any questions after I've muted you, then please feel free to put your hand up and we can always pick those up. Um, but Shohab, we have answered any questions that have come up. We've had some really nice comments, which is great. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I think we've, we've kind of come to the end of, of the example sessions, um, unless there's anything else that you want to say. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, so uh, we'll have one more round. If, if there is anything, uh, any question or any comment, please raise your hand. Otherwise, we'll close the session and we'll pass on the details about the when, when the session starts, hopefully in the next couple of days, uh, and then you guys can join in and, and start the regular session with Mark. And thank you so much for joining us today. I really um, appreciate you, you know, joining in and um, you know having a look and, and seeing what we can offer. So, and uh, you know, hopefully, I'll see you at the next uh, the next session that we run. Thank you. And that's it. Okay, so I'll pass on the the recording later on uh, later today uh, to everybody, and we take it from there. I believe there's no question, so we kind of close the session now. Okay. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks very much. Fantastic. Thank you. Bye then. Bye. So, Shab, I'm going to come out as well. Give me a give me a call if we're going to have a, a quick conversation. Sure.